Brothers Bofer and Bomber and their cousin Biffer, while descended from the dwarves of Moria, are not of the line of Durin, like the rest of Thorin's company. It is likely that the three dwarves lived in the Blue Mountains prior to embarking on the quest of Erebor. Though we only know the ages of a handful of the dwarves, we know that these three are between the ages of 132 and 178 years old. We know this because it is stated that Balin is the second oldest at 178, and that Feely and Keeley were the youngest by 50 years, and Feely was 82 at the time. When Thorin calls her music the night of the unexpected party, Biffer and Bofer play clarinets while Bomber plays a drum. In the book, Biffer and Bofer don't have many moments where they are brought to the forefront. Bomber, on the other hand, is not only known for his immense size, but his tendency to be asleep during notable times. When the company is passing through Mirkwood, a charging deer causes Bomber to fall into the enchanted river. He finally wakes up from his enchanted sleep after six days of being carried by his fellow dwarves. His first thought is naturally of food. After their barrel ride down the river running, Bomber was found to be asleep, or at least senseless, in his barrel. When the rest of the company climbed the lonely mountain to the doorstep entrance, Bomber and Bofer remained behind in the valley to tend to the ponies. When Smaug comes out to scour the mountainside, Bomber's reluctance to climb the rope vanished, and he was hauled up the cliff to safety inside the mountain. Finally, after Thorin decides to defy the elves and men asking for a share of the treasure, and decides to attempt to withstand a siege on the mountain, Bomber states that it was a sorry business altogether and deemed Thorin ever a dwarf with a stiff neck. He wishes only for a strong drink and a soft bed, leading him to be easily convinced by Bilbo to let the Hobbit take over the watch. This allows Bilbo to sneak out, delivering the Arkenstone to Bard and Thranduil. Bilbo returns to the mountain and wakes Bomber after midnight. As usual, we'll take a quick look at the films to learn about these particular adaptations of Biffer, Bofer, and Bomber, aka the axe, the hat, and the fat. If you'd rather stick to just the book canon, skip to the time on the screen. In the Peter Jackson films, these three are described as representing the average working class dwarf, working off the fact that they aren't directly related to the rest of the company. James Nesbitt, whose portrayal I absolutely adore by the way, says Bofer looks after Biffer and Bomber, we see this in moments like when he lets Bomber know he's had enough food. Stop it. We've had plenty. We also see the trio interact in Rivendell, in addition to a humorous interaction on the battlefield in the final film's extended edition. You've lost your axe. <laughs> no, he's not. There you go, cousin. You know where you can stick that. We also notice that it's Biffer and Bomber that Bofer initially calls out for when they reach the mountain. Bomber! Biffer! Anybody? Speaking about his character, Nesbitt says, What I like about him most is that he has a good soul, which is not what one would think of dwarves because they tend to just believe in themselves and their own business. Bofer is described as being the most optimistic of the dwarves and that he doesn't take things too seriously. He also doesn't have the emotional draw toward Erebor that some of the others have, but he enjoys the adventure. When it comes to Bofer and Bilbo, he adds, I think he's the first dwarf that really thinks, actually, we should give this guy a chance. Where's Bilbo? Where's the hobbit? Where's Bilbo? Where's Bilbo? You do know we're one short. Where's Bofer? He's not here, we leave him behind. This relationship between Bofer and Bilbo is one of the character traits that comes across best in the films, in my opinion. Aside from Balin, Bofer seems to be the dwarf that is closest to the Hobbit. I wish you all the luck in the world. I really do. Actor Stephen Hunter describes Bomber as looking up to Bofer because he's older, wiser, and more experienced. In the film adaptation, Biffer has previously sustained a bit of an injury, having an ax in his head. It causes him to be unable to speak the common tongue, communicating solely in the dwarven language of Kuzdul. He's also described as being a toy maker, as we see in this clip of a scene apparently left on the cutting room floor. This also explains Balin's line in An Unexpected Journey, when he actually gestures toward Biffer when saying the word toy makers. Merchants, miners, Tinkers, toy makers. 
Hardly the stuff of legend. All right, now back to the book. All three fight in and survive the Battle of Five Armies. Each is given their share of the treasure by King Dane Ironfoot. And all three make their permanent home in Erebor. In the Fellowship of the Ring, we arrive with Frodo Baggins at Rivendell and learn from Glowing that Biffer, Bofer, and Bomber are alive and well in Erebor. Bomber in particular had become so big that he now required the aid of six young dwarves to lift him to travel from couch to table. With all three still living at the time, it is likely Biffer and Bofer fought in the Battle of Dale. Personally, I have my doubts that Bomber participated, unless of course six young dwarves carried him throughout the battle. But hey, it is Bomber, so you never know. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss the next video when we discuss Glowing and Owen here on Nerd of the Rings.